What is up YouTube and welcome to this Spider-Man No Way Home video. We aren't far from this movie debuting in the UK and there is a flood of marketing TV clips and of course the trailer was out and the theories are flowing like it's the good old Infinity War and Endgame days or should I say now the WandaVision days. However, I was watching the trailers again today and it got me thinking as well as having a closer look at the William Defoe Green Goblin. I haven't got much content to bring to you this week because there's not many movies or TV shows out that I'm really interested in covering, but I wanted to bring something to you in between my games and addiction of Halo Infinite. Seemingly, we are getting two suits for the Green Goblin in Spider-Man No Way Home. We see the classic Green Goblin suit from the iconic Raimi Spider-Man, and we also see a brand new suit, which I joked was the Assassin's Creed The Movie 2. But why have we got two suits? Now, before I present my theory for you here, there is a pretty good answer for that logically that is actually a bit boring i prefer my other idea but this is a bit more grounded in reality we could be seeing norman at two different times in the movie and later he has used tech from the mcu which is more advanced than the raimi verse to actually make his glider and you know try and stop the whole psycho craziness that happened with his turn in spider-man way back when we see electro in one hell of a glow up hiding an arc reactor on his chest so these villains could be using tech from the mcu which is incredibly advanced due to like the chitauri invading earth the whole cosmic part of the marvel universe coming to earth and as well as that so that's why they will be using that tech as well, they could be using Stark Tech to fix the problems their villain tech had. Most of them are not technically evil, but their pursuits to fix themselves or even having accidents actually corrupted them. But what is my idea? Well, we have two Norman Osborns. It's been a long-standing theory that Norman Osborn or Oscorp has bought Avengers Tower. It was mentioned briefly here in Hawkeye in episode one or two. I can't remember the exact one, but it was mentioned that Tony sold it. Of course, in Spider-Man, it was mentioned that it has been sold. So they are setting us up for it to be revealed who bought Avengers Tower. Now, my original idea was that it was Reed Richards, whose rocket from the original origin was funded by Stark in Civil War's MIT scene. I will link that video I did a few years ago in the description. Do be warned, it's not the best of quality with the audio. I have got a better microphone since then. We saw the earth-shattering post credit scene in Far From Home, seeing not only Spider-Man's identity revealed, but also the Daily Bugle and J. Jonah Jameson appear, which, hey, these are on their own really, really cool. But we see J.K. Simmons play J. Jonah Jameson. What if he's simply a variant? Loki has set up the groundwork very easily for the multiverse, and while most variants out there did look vastly different, as we saw, there are some will, will of course, look the same. J.K. Simmons is here to ease us into that idea that the one we saw in Spider-Man Far From Home was actually the MCU reality's J. Jonah Jameson. This means that Mr. Defoe could be pulling double duty, playing both the Raimiverse Goblin and the Green Goblin of the MCU. He is the one who bought Avengers Tower, setting up possibly another trilogy for Spider-Man that will follow one of his most fearsome foes and has an excuse for the mcu to tell some of those classic stories that have been done recently it's a smart idea to avoid everything that has come before it avoiding most origin stories avoiding classic villains which have already been done and well now they can have they had like a sorbet a palate cleanser we can go into those worlds and tell those stories it's an excuse for of course us to have harry osborne and our boy Tom Holland's Peter Parker will no doubt be aging into college pretty darn soon. So, I do believe that J. Jonah Jameson is the setup for Marvel to bring back some of their classic actors from previous beloved Marvel movies. 
Of course, we're seeing that with the Green Goblin as well, that predated the MCU or even came out while the MCU was raging on like the X-Men franchise. The characters can be played by the same actor, but are not burdened by a whole other reality's worth of canon to somehow shoehorn into the MCU. However, they're going to introduce the X-Men into the MCU will be difficult, considering that they have existed for a very, very, very long time. And Magneto goes back to World War II. And, of course, we had Apocalypse, like, you know, like thousands of years ago. But my theory there is the fact that they became too powerful and almost defeated Kang in that war thing that would have happened way before the sacred timeline. And he saw them as a threat and would cull them at every opportunity. They started to, well, or at least had the opportunity to start kind of bringing in the Hickman X-Men world where multiple different realities are had and Moira McTaggart is involved in all that. That's a different video for a different time. You can go and check that out. There's some probably some great videos there on that as well. But that is it for this video. Please drop a like. Please do subscribe with notifications on. I will be playing more Halo Infinite because you know what? I really like Halo. I'll see you soon and goodbye.